Hi, welcome back, everyone. This is the last class of this uh, semester. Uh, so I thought maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, uh, software security, where we can touch on the topics you have learned during the semester. And, and hopefully you feel like you have learned so much. And, and certainly from my side, I'm just very proud of you guys. Um, great job. And then considering pandemic and, and all that you powered through um, a couple of weeks to to go before the winter break and so hand on tight um, and of course um, um, always let us know the you know if you need help and so this is a talk i'm going to give next week at a conference uh, as, a, as a keynote and so i thought maybe i should just share it with my students we touch on many topics of this um, December is tough, like I said last time, do remember to take breaks, um, take breaks, good for your mental health, good for everything, productivity. Um, uh, the work that I do is, um, I will present today um, our, our work from a, a big group. Um, and so that's the acknowledgement. Also funding from NSF or R and, and without that we couldn't get it done. Um, as you have seen, software is everywhere in different devices now have a, you know, a surprising number of code. Um, and we said this before, Ford pickup truck has 150 million lines of code. Can you believe that? That's a, that that's a huge number. Uh, how, how long does it take to scan all these all this code? Uh, 2017, this is the industry control system, a list of uh, vulnerabilities based on percentage of reported uh, issues. And so, so you should go down the list. You're like, hmm, I, I understand what is a cross-site request cross-site to request a forgery, SQL injection, buffer overflow, right? So at the end of the semester, you should feel comfortable. You, you know all these terminologies uh, and you have done projects, right? So you have some intuition, really good intuition. Uh, ransomware re remain to be a biggest issue on those um, CPS systems, the cyber physical system together with, you know, regular cyberspace, hospital computers. I just checked a hundred Bitcoin now is almost worth $2 million and, and the Bitcoin just uh, skyrocketed during pandemic. pandemic. Um, half of the people who paid it didn't get their uh, data back and so always remember to, to uh, back up. It's, it doesn't require you to have fancy solutions. It has to, you know, you, you have to do things that make sense. If you could be exposed to ransomware and then you know systems are not perfect, then you do need to have a contingency plans, backups, and so on. Uh, medical devices, including COVID, wise, right? So all the, the powered by software, getting closer to your body, you know, privacy, and so on. Good news is my lab have looked into COVID wise. This is our Virginia Commonwealth. Uh, uh, contact tracing app based on Google and uh, Apple's exposure notification systems. Perfect security and the privacy. Uh, um, and, and so we have we have looked into its uh, implementation, the, the uh, code sniffing, uh, completely expected, uh, as expected. Uh, and, and so feel free to, to install it, ask your family members to install it. Um, we mentioned again and again, validate input is the top one secure coding rules. Um, and so this is something that I really hope that you learn and you take to your heart when you graduate from here. Uh, make us proud. Uh, Microsoft, of course, uh, is, uh, writes a lot of software. They have this uh, uh, software secure development lifecycle recommendation, you know, the, the process of, of uh, writing big projects mentions code mentioned mentions tools at the different uh, um, stages of the development um, in, in in static analysis right so so what I'm going to talk about static analysis and dynamic analysis require you to run and execute some of your project uh, the class project touch on those um, topics um, and so you know 
I want I want to just uh, talk a little bit of why do you know how to help software developers yeah and then to some extent that uh, um, as a security researcher as I really understand the, the, the constraints uh, time budget um, you, you need to um, finish uh, uh, by the deadline turn you know report to your client um, and then sometimes the security may not be the first priority. Um, and false positives, right? Some, you know, the code, the tools uh, may generate hundreds and thousands of alerts and make them unusable. And so a lot of time that, you know, as a researcher, uh, you, you, people optimize publication, um, but then there's, you know, nitty gritty bits of practical challenges that need to be solved. There's a huge gap. But the more I do research, the more I realize that, man, I cannot just publish papers because there are real people who need my help um and cross-site request forgery we we did a lab on this topic and we know how it works why it is serious and and the the it was the the attack the attack was the first um, came into um um the the um people's realization 12 years ago and and, and so you know just a bit of, uh, a little bit of a um, uh, recap, you have a confused deputy that is a browser. Browser accidentally send a request to a bank appending the victim's uh, credential, even though that request came from the attacker website. Completely uh, um, uh, um, bypassed the, the user's action. Um, so, um, on Stack Overflow forum, the biggest software developers forum, people said, this is a real quote, I have no idea why it was enabled by default, right? So Java Spring framework adds this cookie, um, anti-cross-site request for the cookie by default. And so that, that just shows you the, the reality, the reality, and 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 I wouldn't say it's the developer's fault, right? So if you graduate before two thousand eight, you probably haven't heard of this. Um, and and then you know the, those are real quotes from Stack Overflow, and it's just a very unsettling, right? So I, you know, some app developers said they, you know, the app will only only point to one server, therefore we don't have to verify certificate. <laughs> and this is probably from someone who couldn't implement it right, and so make excuses, right? So and then you know, sample code that just empty methods return uh, true always the case. It's just not very, not secure, not secure. Um, and we know men in the middle and, and so on. And, and so you, I, I say you already are um, much better in terms of security understanding than a, a lot of people. So if, you know, when you graduate to help people understand cybersecurity problems. Um, big influences, you know, the, those influencers, those posts that advocating disabling protection, trust all certificates, and, and uh, very influential. Um, also, cyberbullying happening on those developer sites, and so don't do it. Once you see people advocating insecure solutions, stop them. Support people who say you know you should verify certificate. Always, always um, do the right thing. Do the right thing because because um, um, because you you take this this class, right? This course, and then you were told. The truth, and so you have to, in your own power, um, help people. Um, and of course, uh, the media does not help as well. Um, everyone wants to see attacks. That's just eye-catching, attractive, and so um, um, you know, if you say, "Oh, I do some defense work," you are like boring. Uh, so don't be like that. Okay, don't be fooled by the media. Um, and the truth is, developers need help. And developers, you cannot developers uh, expect developers to write secure code on their own. It's it's tough. Um, in some of the example that I want to show here, you will see, and this is all in Java. Uh, my work, Crypto Guard. We uh, started uh, uh, from C, and then we migrated into Java because we realized Java has 
so many crypto APIs and security APIs that they actually make it a lot harder to code. To code, uh, C um, is same have the same problem. Uh, it's actually harder to detect um, um, because it's less structured, um, less unified because of the lack of um, uh, a very standard. Um, you know, easy to analyze library. So we'll, we'll just talk about Java. And this is example on the left. Uh, so this is, a, you know, AES in, in encryption, which we also learned, right? Um, and, and then you were like, okay, how hard can that be? Encryption, you do encrypt and decrypt. But, you know, with what key? And sometimes the people use a hard-coded key. In this case, it's, it's a string called the inscript. That's the conference I'm gonna present next week. Uh, but they, they should really generate keys randomly um, uh, as much as possible. Um, and so, so you know, you, you know, you were like, okay, you know, maybe just to look for strings, look for constant string that you're thinking the right, the right, on the right track. But sometimes see there are complications. Um, it may not be just one method, maybe multiple methods, maybe multiple class. You know, there is a complex data flow. You know, I define something here, I use it, you know, far away. And so you have to put the pieces together. So, you know, okay, it, it's defined a variable, uh, it's, it's use a variable as a key, but that variable, you know, if I, if I uh, track back, it, it's defined as a constant. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's not, not really a constant. Um, it, it's maybe different type of issues. In this case, it's uh, TLS, uh, lack of proper host name verification. Uh, exception is a cut, but then you have to you cannot just log. If you see something bad happening, you have to throw an exception. You cannot just log, um, and and so and permit a, um, a insecure TLS connection. Right? So so you know just a different flavors of detection. You know it's not you know it's not like you can just parse, you can, you can search for a certain string, MD5, but there are simpler cases, there are more complicated cases. Um, and we find out when we do this research on CryptoGuard, um, we find that it, it's, we, it really requires you to have both crypto knowledge, a little bit crypto knowledge, and then uh, uh, program analysis work, because it's, there's a gap, a semantic gap. You, know, you, you see, this is what I want for crypto property, but then this is what you do for analysis. And then someone has to connect the dots. You have to say, oh, if I want to um, look for a certain um, constant, constant key, then I should do this data flow analysis, right? You see that you, you, you convert a crypto concept into um, a specific, uh, software problem, software, you know, slicing, um, that's basically just to, you know, um, find out all the relevant data flows and that use relation. Um, and, and so you, you have to define the starting point when you do this particular, you know, tracking back. And then this is all you have to define right now. We, we manual, manually define this. We do this mapping manually. Um, and ongoing work is to make it more easy to to define and and so so but but this is this is basic detection approach um and uh, a little bit of results uh, are coming you know with this tool what 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 do we find um uh, we, we scanned a lot of Apache software foundation server code. Uh, we also scanned uh, six, more than 6,000 Android apps. And we find that a lot of the Android app issues actually came from the, the libraries. So the library written by Google, Facebook, Tencent, um, and, and is in a lot of, quite an, a, a number of serious issues, right? Dummy certificate verifier. It's never a good idea that will enable men in the middle attacks that as we have seen. Um, you, you do have to strictly follow the, the, the TLS um, a connection. Um, so, um, and, 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 and so one of the biggest challenges that, that we came across is the false positives. So, um, and because, because the, the Java code is so complex, so the concept is easy, encryption, decryption, signature, verification of, of uh, certificates. 
And then when you implement it, you have to define, you have to set it up, and then you have to, you know, object set it up. It's just a huge mess. Um, and, and so a lot of times that you will, you know, this is a, a real code to just to do some encryption, okay? And this is the data flow graph. Um, and, and what happened is that you, you may have, uh, you know, a lot of times that we, we look for constant because, you know, constant uh, key, uh, constant sort are, are all, uh, need to be hardened and those are vulnerability patterns we want to de detect. But, but then sometimes there are too many irrelevant security constant that results in false positives, false alarms. False alarms are never good um, and, and it just it's, um, uh, cause a lot of issues. You, know, you, you make developers chase down the wrong path. Um, so we want, to, we want to reduce. And some examples of irrelevant um, constant, for example, UTF-8 is just a uh, you know, uh, type of encoding. Uh, it is a constant. And then there's also you know, constant that, that, that represent a file name. Um, and, and so uh, you, know, you have to have some ways of saying, okay, this I don't care. This I do have to keep. This is you know, used as a hard-coded password. Um, otherwise, you, if you have too many false alarms, you won't be able to sell your product and people are like, oh, don't use it. It has too many false alarms. And, and so this is from the 2018, the ballistic missile alert in Hawaii that turns out to be a false alarm. Um, so, um, and, and I, was, I was once told that Um, by our IT security office, um, they said that they really was very embarrassed by having false alarms because they would say to some uh, department, say biology department, you have a infected machine. You need to, you know, find it out what's going on here. And they were like, no, this is this is you have you have false positives, and, and so um, it is a waste of time um, of many people. So we find out that if you if you just use off the shelf um, solutions, if you don't do anything extra to reduce false positives, then you will have a huge number, huge number. And, and so on the uh, of alerts that are just irrelevant on the left, this axis uh, on the right hand, this figure the. Uh, this is a lot of scale, the number of alerts. Some of them are real, some of them are not. Um, and then, but then just by having our refinement to some sort of a heuristic, so we say, oh, there are, you know, certain conditions are very likely this is a irrelevant constant, uh, or, you know, this is an array, you know, there's an array index that are, uh, a constant, but then not a security relevant. And so the, we have five categories of this type of refinement. Um, and um, drastically, 80%, up to 80% reduction of uh, alerts. And, and the reduction are all false alerts. And we manually, we have people manually looking into um, all these uh, um, reduction uh, signals. So, um, so this is this is I would say the, the biggest thing that we contribute in terms of having a deployment quality accuracy, um, um, and so so that that also allow us to um, scan real code with confidence, and and so you this because you can you get a report you know mo the majority of them are actual issues that you have to report, you have to harden. And so we did a lot of the Apache code and, and some of them are fairly big, 402K. Um, the average for, for, uh, 40 min max, min, min, min max, average is 402K, the max is 2.5 million lines of code. And this is an example from Apache Ranger and they have fixed it upon our notification, our disclosure. And so, you know, um, this is just password-based encryption and several issues. So first of all, this, uh, the user MD5, um, and then the sort, sort is, should be random. But then they compute sort based on password, um, a hash of a password. 
the iteration of password-based encryption PBE should be at least 1,000 iterations. In this case, they set the iteration to be the length of the password plus one, too short. How long can the password be? 50 characters at most? Um, too short. And then in addition, they also have a, a side channel leak because your iteration of password-based encryption depends on the length of password. So people observing the runtime would have uh, be able to guess the length of the password roughly, you know, guess it. So, so several issues. And then just to so illustrate how hard it is um, to write the code securely. And then a lot of times that uh, there's no documentation, like 1,000 iteration um, is not written in Google Doc, but it's written in um, a security document, a crypto document. So, uh, so, so you know, developers, uh, it's it's really really need a lot of help, um, and we say deploy deployable accuracy, and we have manually confirmed that we have generated only eighteen false po positives out of twelve, like thirteen hundred alerts. So, so I would say this is this is really pretty precise, pretty pretty good accuracy, um, and, and in the sense that you can have have developers routinely run this type of scanning without worrying uh, their productivity be slowed down by chasing false leads. Um, we also put together a benchmark, a uh, crypto API bench, which uh, a lot of the, the state of art, state of the art solutions are now using to test their detection. Uh, we have base ca basic cases, more complex cases, advanced cases. Um, some of the tools are, have already improved already. Um, and so we, we want to, um, in this, so this is what our work attract a lot of attention. Um, and, and so I want to say a little bit about what do industrial, uh, in industrial strengths code scanning look like? What do people do in practice? Um, and, and so this is from Spaceball, the movie. This is the princess industrial strengths hair dryer. Um, and, uh, my friend Christina Sifland, he's uh, at Oracle Lab Australia, has been leading this project uh, called Perfect. Perfect is a static analysis tool. Um, it's, it's, it's used routinely by Oracle to scan internal uh, code. Uh, it's extremely fast. Um, 10.6 million lines of code can be scanned in 80 minutes and also very precise meaning that very low false positives and so for years and years they they have been you know since uh 2007 and then they've been uh improving perfect to to support all kinds of new security scanning capabilities um and with our help with my students help is specifically yeah um she went to uh, Brisbane and, and did a summer internship last year and helped them um, uh, uh, augment, ex expand the perfect to support crypto vulnerability scanning. And there's a, a, a paper that we call third, which is will be submitted very soon to a, a journal. Um, and just a very quick summary of how, how does it do and the perfect has it so it's built on lbm uh, by code analysis and so our, our uh, crypto guard is built on suit analysis and so it's different and so they have to uh yeah has to redevelop uh based on crypto guards detection uh, their perfect version of the detection um and so the, the design is very similar to what we did um, and so, and then the result is also very good. And, and they have, they scanned, um, they did a whole bunch of uh, evaluations. And this is a scanning 11 internal projects. Some of them are really big. Um, and on the, on the Y axis, this is log scale, right? 10 to the six. And so, so project one, um, one bar is the size, the other bar, the line of code, the other bar is the, the runtime in seconds. So, um, one million lines of code, ten to the six, right? Million lines of code, um, which which on average can be done in five 
minutes. I think the, the project won't finish in 30 minutes. Um, and, and so it's, 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 you know, if you're a developer and, and you get a coffee break and you turn this on and, and you get a cup of coffee and come back, and this is very doable. This is very doable. And it's very important that the industrial strengths, code scanning um, should not, should be fast. And that's, that's a big thing. And I remember, I remember Christina um, said to me that um, she asked the developers, how, how long do you think um, you can tolerate to the runtime? And the developer told him, if, if it runs overnight, then uh, you know, I'm willing to, to stick with it. I'm willing to use it. And, and so, so if, if you, you know, that, that would be a, a good way of thinking how long your code scanning security tools um, should run. And sometimes you may want to run it faster because as they developing, as they write code in Eclipse, um, the, your scanner should, you know, can run, at, uh, can, can detect at the runtime. Um, the good news also they have, out of 11 projects, only 42 vulnerabilities detected. And then you're very impressed that this is high quality code that, that Oracle has. And, and the good thing is that there's no false positives, 100% precision. Precision just means how many alerts that you got are real, are, are actual uh, vulnerabilities. Oh, uh, Parfait also is evaluated on Crypto API Bench, our benchmark, and then have really good results. Uh, the precision is low um, you, if you consider past sensitivity cases and um, this is where you have if statement. If you say, if um, variable i is less than 10, then we go this pass. Otherwise, we go that pass. And so past sensitive analysis would be aware that this difference, this branches. OK, um, a lot of times that people think this is too difficult to, to keep track. And so we'll just say, uh, we don't care which branch. As long as there are some vulnerabilities, we will consider this code as vulnerable. And this is a good approximation. Um, so, so pretty, pretty, pretty consistent results as of what we observed. And also very, uh, we are extremely, our team was, the crypto guard team was extremely excited that the Oracle lab is willing to use our detection uh, approach and, and analysis in to scan their internal code and we were just feel very grateful and, and it's very excited and it works it works um and so and and, and this this reminds me that it's not all companies um in some companies they also have other uh, ways to achieve a secure coding for example google has a refactored libraries and and so they have um and, and this is mostly for C libraries. And so you, if you work in Google, instead of calling standard libc functions, you call Google's um, interfaces, C libraries, um, which are, are wrappers of the, the basic library, are secure wrappers. And there are some processing, they do, you know, boundary checking and, and so on. Um, they, you know, see whether there's a SQL injection. So there are different approaches um, to this. I, I personally, I, I do think that uh, scanning is necessity for all companies, big software, software companies, big and small. Um, and to wrapping up, it, it just, uh, we, we collectively in the cybersecurity community need to focus more on practical deployment challenges. And, and those are the, um, we, need, we need to have the, the support to recognize and, and then to fund, to uh, accept those kind of work. And, and then a, a lot of the, and, and so this, this is a Felix Gonser who received a dissertation, doctoral dissertation award on TLS implementation security and, and he um, has a, a, a way to identify key exchange vulnerabilities implemented in TLS 2.0, uh, 1.2, 1.2. Uh, Real World Crypto and some of the conference I lead, AXAC is going to uh, be uh, held next week and we have this deployable and impactful security as a hard topic theme. 
Um, so it's, it's slowly, slowly getting better. A lot of times that you have obstacles in like our crypto guard work got rejected so many times. People are like, this is not novel. And I was like, this is novel. This is new. No one have done this before this um, high precision uh, code scanning. Um, people, uh, uh, most of the time the security researchers are interested in exposing vulnerabilities, not really interested in producing deployable solutions, tools. Um, so that, that mentality absolutely need to change. Um, there's a, uh, some of you know this, there is a, a tutorial that we put together on secure coding. Um, well, you're welcome to check it out. Uh, a news article on CryptoGuard as well. Um, you're welcome to, to check it out as well. Um, I, and I think that's it uh, for, for this talk. And also this is for, that's it for the, 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 the uh, 4264. Um, and ho hopefully that you really enjoy this course despite the circumstances, um, the asynchronous teaching is not fun at all. Our course was uh, scheduled to meet at 8 a.m. in the morning and I felt like this is too early. Uh, so, so you know, I, I think I really miss the interaction with all you guys. Um, I'm glad to see some of you during the office hours and, and through email. Um, and, and I know some of you may be graduating this semester. Congratulations. And um, in any case, hopefully that, you know, with vaccine and everything, life will gradually return to normal and then you will enjoy your freedom after college and, and be able to celebrate. Um, and, but, but, you know, ho hopefully that the concept that we learned that will follow you um, to your, your jobs. Um, and and do, do remember to, um, you know, practice, uh, you know, se secure thinking, secure thinking. I, I think a lot of things that we talked about will probably become obsolete. Um, and, but, but then the principle, this is why we, you know, I developed the course, I name it principles of computer security, right? Principles never get old. Um, you apply the principle in new scenarios. And so, so hopefully you, you learned, you know, the high level principles and then with the hands-on component, you also have, you know, some specific um, intuitions. Um, of the technical elements. Um, so, so that's it. Uh, have fun with the final project. Look forward to hearing more. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Bye.